Welcome to another episode of Mobicon Academy Shorts, uh, where today we'll be talking about one of my favorite projects, which is the uh, projected intersection in Canmore, Alberta. Um, now, I hear you thinking, where is Canmore, Alberta? But it is a small town in the Rocky Mountains, close to Calgary, and it has been one of our favorite clients for the last five years almost. Uh, we've been working with the town of Canmore to help them develop their integrated transport plan, several street uh, redesign uh, projects, and now the, the, this large protected intersection that we've helped them to, to redesign. Um, and why do we do that? Um, Canmore has a very um, good and transport policy where they aim to reduce the percentage of car trips in the in the town. They um, they realized that they couldn't keep growing the town relying on private automobiles to get around. It's a very um, uh, popular tourist destination with people driving in from Calgary and all around Alberta um, to get to Canmore to go skiing or hiking or, or enjoying the Rocky Mountains. Um, you can only get so far by pushing more cars into a small town and they realize that people really enjoy getting around by bike and on foot, uh, which means that they, they're really pushing for more sustainable mode share um, within the town itself. And that means they're going to make some se pretty serious changes to their roading network. Um, because if you have a town that is still largely built around private cars, um, it's going to be very hard to invite people to start walking and cycling because it just is a not a very pleasant environment to walk and cycle in. Uh, and that starts already at the, the gateway to the town, which is the, the intersection of Bow Valley Trail and Railway Avenue, which is what we'll be talking about today. A very large intersection right on the, on the entry to, to the town um, that was very car oriented. Uh, very long crossing distances for pedestrians, uh, not a very friendly place if you were not in a car. So they asked us to redesign it back in 2019 as part of a larger project to redesign Railway Avenue. And this was our original uh, concept design drawing. As you can see, much more uh, human scale design is what we were going for. Um, and well, there's a few quite innovative features uh, in a North American context. But um, I could talk about that for hours, but I actually have somebody here today uh, that knows a lot more about intersections and uh, traffic signals in general, and that is our new colleague, Narayan Donaldson. Uh, Narayan brings a, a very interesting set of experiences and education, um, having done his uh, Bachelor's of Planning in Waterloo. And um, then he started joining, the, or started working for the Toronto Transit Commission for about three years, and decided to do a Master's uh, at the TU in Delft, here where we are uh, as Mobicon office after which he has done uh, actual traffic signal design and operations work with a Dutch company. So Narayan, uh, welcome to the team. Great to have you on board. Um, good to have some real uh, traffic signals expertise. What can you tell us about this intersection? So as you mentioned, this intersection is a very critical intersection in the Canmore network, being an intersection between arterial roads, which lead between the Can Trans-Canada Highway and the city center of Canmore. So the design that, that was introduced as part of the Mobicon redesign is uh, what's known as a protected intersection design. So the key being that the pedestrians and cyclists are shifted further away from the center of the intersection, which has a number of benefits, including that the pedestrian crossing distances are reduced. So as a result of the redesign, there's now been an increase of uh, 22% more pedestrians and 20% more cyclists than there were before the redesign. So that's already a good sign of how it's performing. But what's even better sign, a 72% reduction in injuries per year, and, and as, as well as a 100% reduction in cycling collisions since before the redesign. Based on those numbers, it may not be surprising then that the intersection has received the 2023 Alberta Minister's Award for Transportation Design Innovation, awarded to the tan of, town of Canmore. So the reason that I'm so interested in intersections is that they can have such a large effect on the transportation network, namely in terms of affecting collisions, delays, and the prioritization of movements. As the location where traffic streams cross, they are often a source of collisions. So by improving the intersection design, we can have a fairly significant effect on the number of collisions and therefore the safety of the road network. And since traffic streams are crossing, we can also have an effect on the delay to road users as one traffic stream may need to wait for another. We can also affect the prioritization of the road network by influencing the directions people travel or indeed even the modes they use to travel by affecting the delays and other characteristics of the intersection design. 
One of the most important things that I like to remember is that the intersection design is only a small piece of the ent entire network. So while it's important to consider the design of the intersection, it's also important to consider how it fits into the network as a whole. So regarding this particular intersection in Canmore, I first heard about this intersection actually in a YouTube comment to one of my YouTube videos where uh, someone informed me that there was an intersection in Canada that was remarkably similar to intersections in the Netherlands. And after visiting on Google Maps, I could confirm that it was probably the most accurate representation I've ever seen of a Dutch intersection in Canada, or indeed anywhere in North America. So there are a few key characteristics of this design. The pedestrian paths and bicycle paths are clearly demarcated throughout the entire intersection. Cyclists do not suddenly enter a pedestrian zone and then reappear on the other side. There is clear demarcation throughout the intersection and the pedestrians and, uh, and bicycle crossings both align with the pedestrian and bicycle signals respectively. By shifting the pedestrian and bicycle crossings away from the center of the intersection, the pedestrian and bicycle crossing distance are also reduced, which can have a number of benefits including to safety as well as to the efficiency of the operation of the traffic signal which is located there. I was also pleasantly surprised by how little clutter there is uh, in terms of traffic signals and signage, as that can often be an issue when implementing more complex intersection designs in a North American context based on the guidelines that typically get used in North America. So in my opinion, one of the most important characteristics of this intersection is the use of fully protected signal phases. So that means that each direction has its own dedicated traffic signal phase, and none of the conflicting directions have green at the same time. So when you're crossing the street on a green light as a pedestrian or as a cyclist, no cars are allowed to turn across your path. They all face red lights. At more complicated intersections, there's a lot of potential for mistakes where left-turning drivers, for example, may fail to notice one of the vehicles or pedestrians they need to yield to, resulting in a collision. With fully protected signals, turning drivers are always provided with a dedicated signal phase during which time other traffic is stopped. A secondary benefit of fully protected signal operations is that they reduce the constraints in the signal timings. When users are required to yield to each other, you have to be careful about when the green starts and ends to avoid unsafe situations. One common example being known as the yellow trap, which is where the green lights for motor vehicles end at different times in opposite directions, causing confusing situations for vehicles who are waiting to turn left. With fully protected signal phasing, you don't need to worry about that because there are no vehicles waiting to turn left. Another notable feature of this intersection design is the use of near side signals, meaning that the traffic signals are placed before the main intersection rather than after it as they usually are in North America. As far as we're aware, this is the first protected intersection in North America which uses near side signals. Near side signals bring a number of benefits. The first of which is that they are only visible to motorists which have correctly stopped behind the stop line. This can help enforce a correct stopping position, discouraging drivers from stopping too far beyond the stop line, potentially obstructing the crosswalk or the bicycle crossing. Nearside signals can also help improve the distinction between the signal groups, which is especially useful at intersections such as this one which have fully protected phases in every direction and therefore have a lot of different signal groups for a lot of different road users. In the Canmore example, the traffic signals are placed directly above each lane to which it applies. This makes it very clear for drivers approaching the intersection which traffic signal applies to them. Placing the traffic signals on the near side can also help improve visibility. Because they're closer to drivers, it's easier for drivers to see the signals themselves and, for example, be able to see the arrows which may be on them. It can also help avoid the situation where one vehicle blocks the view of the signal from another vehicle because the signals are closer to the vehicles and will appear sooner. So another interesting feature of the design is the use of multi-stage pedestrian crossings. These can help allow the signal to cycle more quickly by shortening phase durations. And when the signal cycles more quickly, road users don't need to wait as long for a green light. This is particularly important for pedestrians. So for example, if there's a pedestrian only crossing from the south side to the north side of the intersection, once they reach the north half of the intersection, it's possible to allow another direction of traffic to use the south half of the intersection. So the main potential room for improvement that I see in the design are in terms of the actual operation of the traffic signal itself. With the use of different traffic signal control strategies, 
It may be possible to more flexibly control the signal groups to reduce delays. It may also be possible to use different or more detection to more accurately match the green timings to the actual traffic approach in the intersection in real time. Thanks, Narayan. Uh, super interesting. Always great to hear a formerly outsider's perspective on our work. Um, great that we got your tick of approval even before you started working for us. Um, fantastic to have you on board. Uh, we hope to be working on a lot more uh, protected intersections in the, in the future. So uh, watch this space and um, see you next time on the Mobicon Academy. <laughs>